won 166 in uh, Qatar, right? In Qatar. Uh, Anatoly Malkin, Malkin versus Rainier De Ritter 2. <laughs> yeah, this is... Dude. Holy smokes. You texted me something. I, I was just about to say, for everybody out there that has been listening to the podcast for a while and that know for the longest time Will has been saying, you got to watch one. You got to watch one. Finally, I was like, all right, fine. I'll watch one, whatever, right? And I text Will, I might have a new favorite fighter. Anatoly... Malikin is an absolute monster, dude. Three division champion, dude. Look, <laughs> I don't care what organization it is, dude. I don't care what organization it is. If yeah. you are able to become a three division champion, that is legit, dude. dude heavyweight champion, when, light heavyweight champion, now middleweight champion. Look, I was I was there for uh the the first fight at light heavyweight for the belt when he beat RDR and. Uh, when they announced that they were going to do it at middleweight, which again, if you're not familiar, middleweight is 205 and one because they don't cut weight the same as uh, UFC. So it's at 205. But I'm like, dude, there's no way. There's no way Malikin can actually get to 205. And Wait, he, he looks at heavyweight? Yeah. And he shows up and he's shredded. Absolutely shredded. And I'm like, holy shit, the man did it. Like last, the week before... They show he shows up on the broadcast and they're like, and, and you see him, he's chiseled. He's like, his jawline's all popping. And you're like, holy shit, this guy's actually losing the weight. He's, he lost like 20, 25 pounds, 30 pounds of muscle. And you're like, how hard is it to do that while still maintaining strength? Right. Cause you still have to work out. You're still getting. And he comes out here and he's a fucking I mean, look at tank. his picture pointing at his abs. Yeah. Was and, that guy dude, in the middle, though? I'm not digging him. <laughs> Where's Chatri? Uh, yeah, give me but Chatri. RDR, uh, Genevieve says 40 pounds in a month. It's insane. That's insane. Dude. Uh, but RDR is no joke either. He's no joke. RDR is very good. Um, and look, the fight starts. Malakin immediately, he's back on that Terminator Warpath Berserker mode, walking you to the fence. But RDR showed something in this fight that he did not show in the first fight. The first fight, it was just all takedowns from RDR. That's all he was trying to yeah. do. Take him down, yeah. take him down, take him down. You're not doing it. You're not taking Malikin down. It's not mm-hmm. going to happen. No. Um, and instead in this fight, he, this whole time leading up to this, he's been Dutch kickboxing. And it showed, dude, because he had such a nice uh, step-up knee uh, up against the fence. The, the he just bring his knee up to the chin of, of Malikin. Fantastic for someone who's pressuring you. He'd do a... a Shifting right hand to a low kick off the same side, money drops him with it, and you're like, "Ooh, is is the weight cut too much for Malikin? Look at him! Look at this picture!" Yeah. And the way people the way people are talking about this fight is that oh, he didn't feed, he didn't beat anybody of of substance, and it's crazy because RDR is so good, and it's not like he just ran through him. Maybe the finish makes people think he just beat a bum. Um, because of like how it ended, but he dropped him, and the knees was, were money. He 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 beat a good guy in this fight. He didn't just get a, a trophy, you know. He earned this one. That first uh, one where he stunned Malikin was that a was that like a modified Superman? Like the way that he kind of like no, it was just rushed forward and is he that shifted. what it was? Okay, yeah, he shifted through the right hand on the shift and then followed it with the low kick. Yeah. And even Chachi was like, yeah, I think his leg buckled from the low kick. Dude, and but if Malikin he was like, no, no, no. That hook after he yeah. fell, right? Because he got him with that right Dangerous. leg kick. And then he goes for that hook as yeah. uh, Malikin was falling and he just missed it. I was like, dude, if he landed that one, that would have been rough. To Austin's point, yeah. he said it a couple times already on the chat. And he's like, he's even better on the mic. This is oh, what so absolutely good. made me fall in love with this guy, dude. Yeah. He seems so happy, so ecstatic. So appreciative of the opportunity. Uh, I think he kept on saying, like, my dream is real. Yeah. My dream is real. Like, And I was well, like, dude, I was getting goosebumps, man. Well, dude, I mean, look at this picture, too. RDR showed out, huh? Um, but then Malikin starts going to the body. That was the big change was the body shots from Malikin, yeah. I think, right? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, well. um, the body shots were money to the point where RDR is now shooting desperate, right? He's gassed. He's shooting desperate. Uh, and then Malikin hits him with a knee on the ground uh, that turns him over into guard, and that was it. 
that was it. He couldn't get back up. They had to call it because he because he he couldn't get back up. Um, all respect in the world. You see, like you mentioned, Malikin. Um, uh, you know, after the fight, he's like. RDR hit me harder than anybody has has ever hit me before. He stunned me multiple times. He's this guy's one. dangerous. He's number one. Like very cool to see the respect between these two guys. Um, that you come to know and love with one. But uh, yeah, to Blunderbuff's uh, credit too. Do you see the clip of him comforting Jeremy Miato in the back? Miato got subbed by Pocket Monk early in the fight, and Malikin's back there backstage comforting him while Miato's like in tears, and you're like, this is a champion, and one thing that I've never seen anybody talk about online is, uh, so I was there, right, in Manila for the first fight. That was in the morning because mm-hmm. that was a prime card. It was one fight night. Doesn't have the number, but I have the uh, fucking thing right here. Sits right here all the Look time, that, right? Dude. Uh, circle side. Shout out uh, Juan. Shout out. <laughs> shout out uh, everybody there, huh? Ty Morshed. Shout out Mahoko. Uh, but, you know, that's early in the morning. It, it started like 9 a.m. Uh, in the Philippines because it starts at 5 p.m. here in California. So early in the morning. Then later on, they have 1161, I think, uh, which was mm. actually uh, Pascal versus Brooks, uh, their first fight, which was also the rematch was on this card. But that was later on in the night. That was for the uh, East Asian time zone. Dude, the whole time of the second event. So Malikin knocks out RDR to become a double champ. He gets the, he was the heavyweight champ. He gets a light heavyweight belt in the morning. And then that night during the other event, Malikin walks out. He's still there. Uh, he had a couple of his fighters fighting on that card too, with the second one. And he's just walking around with his belts in the crowd, taking pictures with people, hanging out with people, just oh, walking awesome, around. Man. Like, it's like the guy is so cool. I was actually, we uh, got to be in the locker room with him uh, before the RD, the first RDR fight. Um, He's the coolest guy in the world. Dude, you should have totally I mean, pulled a Steven Seagal and just gone over there and started giving him tips. Okay. Has me somebody recorded it, dude? And then after when RDR, like... when RDR <laughs> shoots, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But you know, but that just speaks to who he is as a person, right? Is is he's walking around the Kate the the arena later on that night after he just got a, a, his second belt and he's not big timing people. He's walking around, just walking around the stands, not sitting in one spot watching the fights. He's just walking around. Um, Austin says, you guys remember when Mitch got pinned between Malikin and Ali Akbari? I think it was hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, in the pre-fight press conference, he tells RDR, you're my chocolate cake. I'm going to eat you. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, dude. Um, but, That's and despite so all the personality, it, it, he's got both. This is He's a star. He's 100% a star. Um, you know, people say like, oh, he's fighting in one. It's not the level of competition or whatever. He's easily top five at, at light heavyweight uh, in the UFC, without a doubt, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Blunderbub, uh, guys always stalking around Lumpini on Fridays, too. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's a man of the people. <laughs> HLB Comer says, Miro is my chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and there was Lord. a cake. There was a cake. Then he posted a cake. There was one. Um, but look. We talked about the fight itself, I guess. Already, uh, Malikin, I don't know what he does next. But another thing that you see, which is really cool. What, but, but what does one do next, though? Because think about yeah, it. I you don't know. have somebody that's holding on to three belts, heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight. How do you manage this now? Like I, I think have... you go back up. I think you go back up. Maybe he relinquishes middleweight. I'm not sure. Um, I, I think maybe he, you relinquish it. Um, he, he did it. Some people are like, he should go to 185. No. No, he can't. You cannot go to 185. That's too much. I think you go back up to heavyweight and you try to build the heavyweight division off of him. He looked um, like because... uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson when he'd fight at 170. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. The skin yeah. and bones, man. He looks so unhealthy. Rest in peace, huh? Uh, oh, but look dude. at this man of the people, huh? And you shout out his wife, Anita, saying three belts. You got three? Oh, you know? that's such a cool picture, dude. But you know what's even cooler? You know what's even cooler picture? Well, what is it? There's, oh yeah, that's a good one. One of the best. It's amazing. Look at these that's twenty. Really that's eighty. It's over eighty pounds that he's carrying. It's insane. Do it. Do it. I'd go grocery <laughs> shopping like that. Yeah, I would do everything <laughs> like that. I wouldn't care. I mean, just incredible. Oh, man. Really incredible. The only thing that I I wish would have happened is maybe it's because they're in uh, Qatar. 
Where's the confetti? Yeah, you know? yeah, I thought about the exact same the, thing. I was waiting for three belts. Give me the confetti. Um, you know, uh, Austin brings it up. Uh, his story about him and his wife moving to Thailand, giving giving up, uh, urging his dream makes the pick a lot harder. Especially, yeah, with the one with his wife. Um, you know, they talk about he came from nothing in Siberia. A lot of days, he never he didn't even get to eat food. Uh, he ends up moving. He meets Anita, uh, and they fall in love. All this stuff. He didn't have anything she did they still give up everything sold everything they owned because she supported them they moved to thailand to get to pursue this I, it's just a beautiful story you know it's just and he seems like such a good guy it's like doesn't he it's fantastic you know, know. she's talking about him and his wife on a first name basis his their son on a first name basis uh it just seems like such a good dude that everybody's he's just infectious you know um he should be going says is that courtney cox <laughs> <laughs> um but you know <laughs> Number one boss in the world. Yeah, the pro fight press conference. Chachi's hugging him. Uh, they, they just have such yeah, respect. Yeah, Ritter. It's, it's just so good, dude. And and um, they also another thing that stood out to me is in the post fight press conference. Shout out uh, Nick Atkin, by the way, uh, for going out to Qatar and, and doing some great coverage and asking the right questions at the post fight press conferences that allow us to talk about these little details and stuff. But um, uh, they asked. He, I think he, it was him that asked, like, "What's next? Like, what do you guys want to do? Like, what do you what do you want to do with Malikin? Go up to heavyweight, light heavyweight. What's the move?" And he was like, "Well, he's he's probably going to go on vacation and probably eat all those thirty pounds back or whatever it was." And then uh, uh, he's like, "And then I'll meet with uh, Anatoly and Anita, and we'll figure out what's next." And it's like, "Damn, you're gonna meet with the both of them." Like, that's bad. It's just dude. sick, dude. It's just a cool, cool thing, you know? Um, yeah, very cool. Um, I don't know what else to say. Three belts. You know? There's nothing else to say. We'll leave it at that. My new favorite fi- uh, fighter, Anatoly Malikin, dude. Damn. I remember when I tried to get you to watch him the first time, you were like, all right, all right, all right. I guess he's pretty good. Now, who is this clown? Anything. You're like, I don't see anything special, really. And I was like, what? Just wait. Just keep watching. <laughs> uh, Genevieve says, isn't his wife his manager? I believe so. I believe so. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice, but yeah, all fantastic. Right. Fun stuff. What's the uh, next uh, fight we're going to cover on one? Co-main event, we got Tenkai versus Tan Lee two to unify mm. the belt. Tenkai took the belt; he had to pull out, so they do Tan Lee for the uh, um, interim. He gets the interim. They do the rematch, uh, and we got a little bit of a. And then Olivier was like, "No, I'm not doing that." <laughs> <laughs> we're giving you oh, both yellow man. cards <laughs> yeah that was, uh, which uh, i think look. go ahead this was a bit much in my opinion i don't necessarily agree with the yellow cards in this one um it's a title fight it's five rounds dangerous strikers uh obviously dangerous striker strikers it could end in a split second obviously uh especially with hindsight huh um but be a little bit more cautious, I think, in, with the yellow cards in this one. Um, it, was, it was slow, but... My notes, the very last thing I put down, Tong Lee showing why he was worried to engage at the end of the fight. Right? You have to be cautious in your approach. And I 100% agree with you. Because, I mean, on the last fights that we were just watching, mm-hmm. uh, I was saying, bust out the yellow card uh, now. Yeah. Bust out the yellow card now. And... In this case over here with these two guys, like they were still engaging. It just mm-hmm. wasn't like it, maybe as much as uh, Olivia Costa would have liked. It, w- it was a really good chess match. Both of them are extremely yeah. dangerous. We have uh, one of them that's the champion. Uh, the other one's the interim champion. They're, go- they're, they're going to fight, dude. They want the title. Line. It's a, yeah, yeah, a lot of the line. First fight was a banger. First fight was a banger between these two. Um even Chachi said, he's like, yeah, it was slower than I thought it was going to be, especially since the first fight was a banger. But a lot of times that happens, right? You get a banger and then you do a rematch and it's like a little bit more gun shy because they felt the power of each other. Um, and in a split second, Tenkai hits him with his right hand uh, and drops him. And like, that was it. Do you think the crowd uh, played into this one a little bit? Yes. But up until that point, I think the crowd had been a little bit over it. <laughs> mm. I think they were a little antsy uh, leading into that. But, you know. They just wanted to see Malikin. Yeah. 
yeah basically they're like get him out here please yes I'll see these absolutely. belts uh, but yeah fantastic win by tenkai i think tenkai he's so good dude he's the first ever uh chinese male champion in a major organization i feel like one should really be getting behind him and promoting the shit out of him because he's very very good yeah really good um what about uh i think i have oh yeah last one gotta, gotta love it the respect. the respect and at the end of the uh the event too where they're like uh moments of respect or whatever what do they call yeah, it's it it's great yeah yeah something like that and it's like Anatoly, you know, hugging uh, RDR, and then these yeah. two guys hugging, and they just show all the times that everybody's all respectful to each other. I'm like, man, that's that's pretty cool. It is cool, you know. It's nice to see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, are we uh, moving on to the next one? Yeah, do you want to watch the knockout real quick? Might as well, huh? Which one? The tank high one. Sure. Let's just watch. It's Why quick. not? All right, it's quick. Don't don't blink. Bam. Oh. Lunging right hook? Yeah, it was nice, dude. Gave him every <laughs> chance to get to it, right? Look at the yeah. shrink. Bam. Yeah. Oh, it was nice nicely placed, man. Looked like he was uh right on the jaw. Cut him line, off huh? as he was circling there, yeah. Olivier. Yeah, stuff, huh? Let go of the fence, Olivier. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh what's the next one we're gonna cover, sir? Uh next one we're gonna cover is the spicy one of the event. Uh, Ooh. It is, get ready, Blunderbub. Uh, it is Joshua Pascio versus Jared Brooks. Always love seeing Jared Brooks walk out, by the way. Uh, you God do. I know some people aren't a fan of it, but I love it. I can tell you that every time he does it, I was there for it in Manila. Everybody in the crowd does love it because it's fucking awesome. Comes out with there with a sick ass like battle wounded monkey mask. He's throwing bananas into the crowd. Look at this guy. Look yeah, I don't think he threw. Uh, I don't think he threw bananas this time. His coaches did. His coach. Okay, well. Yeah, you know what he did throw? <laughs> yeah, Pashiao. <laughs> yeah, Joshua Pashiao is what he actually threw. So, so, so uh, sick back take by the way. Yeah, going into this, Jared Brooks, fantastic. Uh, I think he has a split decision loss to Pantoja, um, you know, in the UFC. He gets cut from the UFC, goes to one, becomes their champ. His grappling is no joke. His grappling is so good. Immediately in on the entry for the back take. Uh, Pasha does a good job defending that. Unfortunately, uh, in defending that, he kind of goes for like a little bit of a Kimura lock, a little bit. Uh, DC goes, don't can't lift here. Uh, Jared Brooks says, yes, you can. Um, lifts him up, gets his hips behind him like the wrestler he is. Uh, look, you see Pasio has two on one on that uh, left arm of uh, Brooks, uh, but Brooks elevates him, throws him directly Ooh. onto his head. It was scary because he's out. He drops him right on his head. Um, shout out. Uh, fully hanging that landslide. Uh, but <sighs> look, he drops him. He finishes him. Uh he well, celebrates it like he was wins. out out because he actually was he did defend that was nice to see right? that was like the yeah. that was good to see because you're like oh he drops right on the head the slow-mo is bad the slow-mo is hard we will show it don't worry um but uh <laughs> it is bad uh ganskow says i had no volume and didn't watch the post fight found out hours later and you might be asking what did you find out what do you mean you watched him get slammed on his head uh and you saw him celebrate uh you found out that uh he was disqualified he was yes. disqualified and he said, oh, no. Like, oh, no, my belt. Yeah. Um, and also an felt bad, probably. Uh, and it was an accident. Um, look, <laughs> in, in one, you cannot slam uh, to the head. People are saying you can't spike. There's no slams to the head. This was not spiking. There was arch. There was an arch to the throw, an arc to Shocking the throw, right? Shocking turn of events, as they Shocking turn, yeah. Uh, Pasha was in a neck brace after that. Uh, Chaudhry said uh, it was just after all testing, everything was good. Uh, just a next strain, so that's good, right? Oof. Um, because it was bad. Was Chachi uh, pissed? Yeah, he was super upset because he did break the Ooh. rules. It's a foul. You can't slam people yeah. on the head. Um, you know, it's not good. Can't do that. Um, but he did show remorse, Jared Brooks. Uh, it wasn't like I don't think he intentionally. I don't think he knew that you know that you can't slam on the head because look, if this was in the UFC, the same exact move he would have knockout of the year. You know what I mean? Um, Rose Namajunas. 
Rose Nami Yunus, Jessica Andrade, right? Yeah. Um, but in one, you cannot slam to the head most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes you can't. Uh, but Jared Brooks uh, posts on Instagram that night. Uh, he says, uh, Pasha, uh wish nothing but the best for you, brother. I hope you're okay. I am sorry for letting down my family and the organization. I did not do anything, or I did not intentionally Ooh, do anything. Rough. And new congratulations. Wow. And then they got breakfast together the next morning. Oh, dang, uh, dude. Post with them, my brother. I am so happy to see you and give you a big hug. Glad to see you're happy and healthy. Congrats, champ. Had a good conversation and breakfast. Uh, he w- was with the whole team. Had breakfast with, the- with their whole team. Um, you know, classy move. Guy. Classy move. Classy dude. move. I like that. Uh, very classy. Um, <sighs> but uh, the reason I say uh, <laughs> that it's not all the time I- illegal um, because sometimes, look, if there's a rule like that, you got to enforce it. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes. Oh. Okay. And who is this? Oh, snap. All good, dude. Don't you worry about it. You can slam on the head. So if anybody's just uh, listening and not watching, highly suggest uh, hopping on YouTube so you can see the footage. Yeah, and Uh, shout out Kaposa posting. like straight on his head. Yeah, this is one one uh, one Friday fights fifty two. This was Herb also. Um, this was uh, February sixteenth, so pretty recent. Maybe they said, "Hey, Herb, uh, that was illegal. Next time that happens, uh, don't allow it." And then he mm. corrected it. Right? Could be uh, that could be the case. Um, but could be. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, a bad rule. Uh, if you can knee to the head on the ground, you should be able to slam people on the head. Uh, spiking should be illegal. Spiking's bad, but that was not a spike. Obviously, Pasi is okay. Sometimes they might not be okay. But this is also mixed martial arts where we are seeing people get brutalized. And it's weird to draw the line in some places. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Genevieve says Herb was super on his ref game. I'd agree. Yeah, he actually was. He, he uh, was really he good. He had a superb night. Because look, the as much as I disagree with this rule, uh, it is a rule. being the case, it is a rule. And he enforced it, it perfectly. It was perfect. That's he how you do it. it. He did the yeah. damn thing, you know. Um, oh. uh, you want to see? Right. It? <laughs> yeah, let's let's do it. Let's watch it. <laughs> let's watch. Let's, it. I mean, where were? You? Why not? I don't know yeah. if HLB Comer saw it or not. So let's put it on. Yeah. Bam. There it is. Drops him right on his head. Finishes him off. Um, celebrates immediately because it was sick. Uh, yeah, but they been, said right away they're like, wait, he called time. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't call, call the fight. fight. He called time. Yeah, Herb, man, Herb is fucking good lately, huh? Yeah. And, and I good think I told you too. Herb in one is it, yeah. is even better. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you want to see the slow-mo? Let's really yeah, see how yeah, it lands? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, there he goes off to the side. And he knows it, dude. He tries to put his arm <sighs> down to yeah. take most of the impact and to hopefully redirect his dude, body in some neck way, shape, or form. And, oh, that does not The neck good. bends bad, dude. Okay, um, one, more but, time. one more time. Yeah, one see. more time. Oh, that is not good, dude. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, I changed my mind. This should be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> After watching <laughs> that replay. HLB Comer says, yeah, story of the fight commission declares this a win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so that was good. rough. That was rough. Uh, it was rough. Um, but, you know, uh, we want to move on to some more good reffing? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, which one are we going over to? We are LA going Bari to your, versus, probably uh, your Blar- favorite favorite fight. Uh, yeah, Amir dude, I'm going to get mad covering this right now. Uh, it's so, be again, I'm sure. newer to one, right? So when uh, Arjan uh, Boulard, when I first saw him fight, Will told me about him, you know, and he was became a champion, first Indian champion, heavyweight champion. He beat uh, our boy Brandon Vera. And then, uh, you know, he, he's inactive for about a year. But in the meantime, dude's I think blowing you're being, up in India. I think you're pretty much – you're being pretty generous to how I built him up to you. <laughs> being a star in India in the meantime, you did tell me, you're like, dude, this guy hasn't even fought. Is what you told me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, Malikin got the interim belt. There's no way this dude's coming back. It's just not so, going to happen. So this is how I'm introduced to him. You know, like, yeah. hey, he won the belt. He beat an older Brandon Vera. He's inactive. And so I'm like, oh, dude, what's this guy all about, right? He comes out. He comes out with that, like, big old thing. What is that? I don't know, dude. I don't know, but it's pretty sick. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. I see, see him walking at, walking in. And then what I've seen from him so far is just non-impressive whatsoever, man. And yesterday, watching him fight, 
Well, he oh, comes yeah, out like that, and you're like, okay, he's a former champ, and he's coming. He's got the thing. He's fucking here for it. And then he sees Ali Akbari throwing punches like this with this facial expression. And he's like, oh, God. <laughs> and he's like, no, never mind. Never mind. Uh, and then the next thing that happens in the fight is this. Oh, just kidding. I'm not even on that monitor. It's this. Because <laughs> Herb gives him two yellow cards for essentially just backing away the entire fight. Um, and then he gives him the red card to disqualify him. Uh, it's the second yeah. time, only the second time a fighter's ever been red carded for inactivity and not fighting. Um, pretty uh, embarrassing. But at the same time, look, people are going to say Ali Akbari should have been doing more. It's so hard. It is so hard to fight somebody who is not fighting back. It's incredibly hard. Um, it, it's, you know, you can cut off the cage. Also, when Bular was going, he was getting countered. I was like, oh, dude. Yeah. There's a reason why you. he was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, for you, dude. Like, there's nothing he could do. Like, he had no chance against Ali Akbari. So, yeah. yeah. HW Converse is finally a fighter I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd be doing the same thing, huh? Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Chatri said after. Uh, after the the post fight press conference, he said uh, he he let the people of India down, and they will no longer see him as a hero or something like that. Dang, <laughs> I was like, that's oh. such, uh, by the way, I, dude, I'm sorry if I look like I haven't been paying attention, but your boy here has had to do some heavy research, and I found out that uh, what he carries in is a gada, which is an ancient Indian weapon. Uh, so yeah, that's tight. what I'm saying. When when you see that, and you're like, that's pretty sick. And now that I read up on it, I'm like, man, that's really sick. If only, like, he carried the warrior spirit with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Genevieve says, to be fair, Alec Bari wasn't really working hard to push the action either. I think he was. It's so hard to chase somebody down and try to land shots while they're just... If they're focused on evading the whole time, it's really hard and it's really discouraging to continue trying to walk somebody down and cut the cage off and swing and miss. It's hard, you know? Well, also, when I, I felt like... Ali Akbari's game plan was heavy around countering, which, like I said, whenever Bilar would go, he would counter. But when you have your mindset on, I'm going to focus on countering, and the person in front of you is not really going, then that mm -hmm. makes it a little bit tough. But Bilar was the one that whenever he would get countered, he would have those huge step backs and skip back. Yeah. So in Herb Dean's eyes, it's like, well, whenever they do start engaging, Whoa, he that's dips. Whoa, thumbs up. Look at that. He dips. Oh, did it come Can't through? Can't just be throwing the thumbs up up there, dude. Oh, a celebration here for... Hey, just peace, the, dude. Just peace. What is peace, dude? I mean? The balloons? <laughs> the balloons. I don't even remember. Yeah. I so, don't uh, by the way, them. everybody that's watching, uh, we accidentally found out that in uh, the new uh, software... Upgrade, the new Mac OS. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like different things that happen whenever I do give me a hand. Give me a, give me a two thumbs down for Arjan's performance, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is probably how he feels today. Let's, let's rain on that parade. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah, uh, but that, that was uh, that was it, huh? Heavy on countering. Fastest way to turn Genevieve against you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. All right, but that's man. it. That's it. Um, we're going to move on was to one last cover? fight. One last fight here. Uh, Vladimir Kuzmin versus uh, Saik. Uh, I've never seen Saik fight. Maybe this was his one debut. Maybe you could check that for me. I haven't seen him fight before. I know they threw a lot of light, late notice fights on when they took off Stamp and the Nongo fights. Um, maybe mm -hmm. this was one of them, but Kuzman has been in there with some good guys. Um, but I've never seen Saik before. Um, see if I can find it. But this was a fun fight, huh? Um, fun Muay Thai in a cage. Uh, this is the only thing that he has, by the way, in uh, Tapology is just his fight yesterday. Well, Tapology doesn't really track like Muay Thai, yeah, so a lot of these so guys don't have, um, you know. Uh, but it was a fun fight. Uh Early on, Kuzmin lands a big right hand. I think it was the second round that dropped Saik. Saik looking like a like a Middle Eastern Carlos Condit out there with weird angles and like weird lunges. He's got the beard, the hair. It looks just like him. Uh, it was cool to watch him work in there. I could see uh, it. He was, he was kind of a step behind, uh, but I, I do like him. Kuzmin's good too. So um, good showing from Saik. Uh, but you wanted to talk about some stuff in this fight, huh? Well, I was just going to say that the winner of this fight was Olivier Cost. We talked about the refing. So for me, the way that he handled the eye poke, right? Mm -hmm. Eye poke happens and he stops it. You know, he calls time just like any ref should. But then he looks at the fighter and he goes, hey, you good? You yeah. good? 
Let's yeah. go. Right. And he brings him back out. And sure enough, the fighter's like, yeah, I'm going to go. Where a lot of times you're like, hey, time. Hey, you got time. You yeah. got time. You got five bring minutes. somebody in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was, I, I think he saw, okay, it's not as severe. Mm-hmm. Like I, I saw it, but it wasn't that bad. Like, hey, you good? You good? Come on. Come on in. That and then the knee, right? You see the, the, knee. Uh, the let's, illegal let's knee. See the, let's see the knee, huh? Yeah, so boom, there's the illegal knee right there. Hey, he perfect he kicks the that too. He kicks the leg out as he's coming in. So he drops to a knee and then lands his own knee to the head while he's clearly oh. down. And Olivier, look, you can see Olivier's running in before he even Yes. But this is what I love. Right yeah. away, right? It's no like, hey, that's a hard warning. You know, or like, hey, it was accidental. Yeah. We we deemed it as accidental. It was just here's his yellow card and immediately point deduction. Yeah, and watch him here. He's already running in like, no, no, no. He's like, he tried to stop it too. <laughs> he started to stop it from happening. Gives him the yellow so card. Good, takes, a, takes a point away. Yeah, so winner, no... the, winner of the fight, Olivier Koss, the boss. Yeah, very very good. Uh, let's watch the hey. knockdown too from Kuzman, huh? Because it was a good yeah, knockdown. let's do it. <laughs> Agent should have been there for the Aljo fight. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this right hand. Bam. Bam. Piotr Jan, not a fan of Olivier Koss. Bam. Beautiful right hand. Like that. Sets it up with the jab. Yep. Money, dude. Good shout out stuff, one for letting man. us show the clips too, by the way. Yeah, shout out one. Uh man, I think that was all we we're gonna cover though. Uh, uh had some fun watching uh Souza grapple. Oh yeah. Uh, uh Pocket Monk. Woo, to open the car oh, yeah. for submission. Sick. Really that good tight. too, man. Really good too. I like that guy. That's the one where uh Miato ended up uh pretty devastated after the loss where my boy Anatoly. Had to go yeah. console him, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Zihao versus uh, Suzuki, fun fight as well. The um, opening fights were very good. Yeah, I, I was fun very happy fights. with the opening fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, o- overall, I really enjoyed the event more than uh, UFC Vegas Ubu- Abu Dhabi. Yeah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, Tenkai gets a bonus for the knockout on Tan Lee. Uh, Malikin gets a bonus for uh, becoming the triple champ. First ever triple champ, huh? Um, Fantastic. But fun. Fun stuff, you know? Um, yeah. Fun card. Austin saying nasty bulldog choke. Yeah. That bulldog choke from Yamakita was insane. And the way that he used the fence as leverage. Yeah, that was tight. Nasty. Reminded me of a uh, toasty, huh? Yeah. And then uh, you, you hear toasty the corner. Who was the ref in that one? Who was the ref in that one? Because you hear the corner going, oh, his feet sure. are on the fence. His feet are on the fence. And uh, the ref was like, no, he's pushing off of it. He responded yeah, yeah. to the corner and said he's pushing <laughs> off of it. And I was like, was oh, it? man, I don't know, but it was on top of it. Herb Let's watch God. it, huh? Herb Dean. Oh, there it is. Look at the way that he's le- – Amazing. That's sick, dude. Because he had the bulldog choke in for uh, a minute, you know. And he then flipped over with it. They got into that position. Yeah, flipped over with it, and he sees a fence, creates that leverage where he, now he's just cranking up even more. What a yeah. finish, man. Fun fight. Fun fight. I, I I told you Pocket Monk is one to watch. He's a uh, he's very good. Cool ass nickname too, huh? Pocket Monk. Pocket Monk. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, that's good. I'll take that. Well, hey, shout out to Austin, Ganskow, Genevieve, HOB Comer was on fire today. Keith, Blunderbub, Colleen. Um, I'm missing anybody. I think that's it. Ganskow, Austin, Keith, HOB Comer, yeah. Blunderbub, Genevieve. Fun stuff, huh? Uh, he says time. his toes were in the fence. I'm going to have to go back and look. Keith, um, you watch that dirty mouth of yours, man. <laughs> you don't, don't talk bad about my boy, Herb B. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but look, let's see. What uh, what do we got next week, huh? We got a lot next week. Um, uh, yeah, we have UFC 299. Uh, which one event is going on next week, too? We got UFC 299. We look got at the curly hair in the background. Yeah, that's fantastic. O'Malley versus Cheeto, two Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis, Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page. What? Oh, that's gonna uh, be a fun fight. Gilbert Burns versus Jack Della, Sonia Dawn versus Piotr Jan, Curtis Blades versus Jelton Almeida, uh, Gamrot versus Dos Anjos, <laughs> Munoz versus uh, Phillips is very fun. Pedro Munoz versus Kyler Phillips is a fun fight. That's a very fun fight. Yes, Michelle absolutely. Michelle Pajeda is on there. We got uh, the boy making his UFC debut. 
different potato. Oh, Michelle Pajeda. Uh, but we got uh, Despagne. I think that's how you say it. Uh, he's like six foot seven. He's got the longest reach in the UFC, making his debut. Been watching him outside of the UFC. One to watch. He's against Josh Parisian. Not going to be a great night, I don't think, for Parisian. Uh, but it's a fun card. Uh, yeah, and man. then. Don't then sleep on got, that one, though, on the Pedeta versus uh, Alex Achek. That's, that's going to be a one. fun fight. That's a good one. H.O.B. Comer says, oil me up. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> it is fun, dude. Um, we got – what's what's after that next week? We got uh, International Women's Day card from one. Janet Todd versus Pet Gija. Alicia Helen Rodriguez versus uh, Morales. Dude, going to be a banger. Uh, Absolutely. We got – if we pull up the card, um, it is a very, very good card. Um what do we got? Let me pull it up. I'm surprised, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they don't have a stamp on it uh, for the, um, uh, you know, the women's card. She's headlining Jackie... one though soon, aren't? Isn't she? Soon, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Jackie Boontons on there again. We got my girl Martina Kraczynski versus uh, Ekaterina. You know, that's a banger. Um, that's Barbie versus Martina. Lara, uh, Pizza Fernandez, dude. Pizza Power. Let's go. Uh, it's a fun card. And then we got something else. Joshua? We got something else. Joshua versus Nganu? Come on, dude. So Joshua good. versus Nganu. If you haven't played the mobile game that they put on the website where it's like 8-bit fighter game with Nganu versus Pat, uh, Joshua. You get oh, you can actually one. play it? Yeah, I sent you the screenshot, and you're like, I'm not even going to reply. Um, but it is <laughs> – <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, it's super basic, but it's fun. Oh, you know? yes. they made That's awesome. Promote the damn thing. Uh, nice if you haven't watched the trailer, if you haven't watched the trailer that they made where they're beating each other up and it's like video game style, it's fucking awesome. Just Austin says, fun. imagine if Nganu gets a W with a KO. Don't, dude. Don't even because I'll go nuts. I yeah. will go nuts. And you know yeah. what? The entire MMA world, the boxing world will go nuts. It would be dude. huge. And don't count – You know what? Boxing needs it, dude. Boxing needs boxing Francis needs to knock out Joshua. Boxing needs Francis to knock out Joshua and then his next fight be in the PFL and say, y'all can wait. That's oh, what – that would be sick. The, the MMA tight. world needs this. Yeah. Yeah. MMA, MMA world has been taking some lumps in the boxing no, uh, for a while. No pressure in Ganu. But there's a lot <laughs> yeah. riding on this right now. Yeah. Do it for us, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks again to everybody that joined us. It was an absolute blast. Uh, hopefully we get to do more of these uh, watch along parties or the fight companions, whatever you want to call them, because it's definitely a blast watching fights with y'all. And then, uh, of course, next Sunday, we'll try to recap again as long yep. as life allows it. Um, and then, oh, I was going to say uh, this podcast produced by Richard Pustos, but not today, huh? This podcast. Today, uh, huh? But normally, let's give, by... him, let's give him his flowers anyways, huh? Rich, Rich yeah, let's do it. does a great job on this show. He does. But like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're trying to reach 11,000 subscribers. We're rolling our way. Uh, just uh, less than a year ago, we were like, hey, we're trying to reach 2,000. And now we're close to 11,000. So thank you, everybody, for the support. And uh, yeah, let your uh, your mamas, your papas, your aunties, your uncles, let everybody know. If they like MMA, join us. Shout out to Rich the Casual, our producer. And uh, shout out to you, Will, holding it down, doing double duty, bro. Great job, man. Thanks. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, you're like the, you're like the mannequin of podcasting. Whoa. You're champ in multiple. I'll take that. Oh. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for another uh, week, I guess you could say, special episode, Saturday episode of Story of the Fight.